Welcome to a new episode of the Making It Real podcast for founders who take action. Today, it's my special honor and pleasure to have Amy Sophie Carstensen on the show, the founder of Art Night, uh, which is now called Realtainment, as I just learned as well. Uh, Amy, uh, do you want to tell us a bit how you actually got started, how you started to make it real? What were you doing before and then how did you get started? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. So my beginning of my founder's career actually happened as a, a founder next to my full-time job when I was working at Bertelsmann. Because there, back then, I founded my first company, which was called Vielfalt, a female empowerment blogazine and platform to bring women together, to motivate them, um, to dare to live their dreams. And this was actually my first company. While doing that and having my full-time job aside of this, I just realized that I really would like to found my own big company. So feel that were all was always like something that I would like to do next to my job. It was more like something to support others and like something for my free time. But I always knew that this is not my big shot of company. So then I thought a lot about it and then decided, okay, I want to find something. And then actually by a friend, I was connected to David, who is my uh, co-founder today. And he had the idea of Art Night. So we started right away. I quit my job and then we yeah, figured out what we were doing together and started working on a business idea. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when founders meet, it's a super exciting time. You, you see like, hey, I maybe you don't want to start it by myself. Did you have it very clear that you wanted to do it with, together with a co-founder? Um, for me, that was quite clear because um, I was in the end of my 20s and I was working in a lot of big companies before so I've never founded a company before and then I thought okay I feel a little bit more secure doing it together with a partner today I will tell everybody if you have like the perfect partner that's great so do it together but if you have a great idea um, you should also dare to found a company by yourself and hire a great team so you don't actually need a co-founder but I'm quite happy that I have one and um, because we are working together quite well since four years now. Mm -hmm. And let's look at these early stages when you thought about actually starting then and making it real. Uh, did you talk to different people where you thought potentially those could be founders and how did you know that David is the one that you actually like to co-found with? Yeah, so actually the idea of founding a company was there before I actually had the idea what I would like to found. So what I was doing is, um, especially here in Berlin, but also in other cities, you have different networks or events um, where you could go to connect with other potential founders or to connect with people who just started a company and are still looking for a co-founder. So that is what I did really a lot. So I went to a lot of events. I connected a lot with other people. I shared with kind of everybody that I would like to found a company, but I, that I don't really know what. And then I also developed some ideas by myself. And um, so next to developing ideas by myself, I started working with other startups and um, just a couple of days to figure out if this could be a match and it wasn't. And then I had an idea by myself. It was kind of a wedding platform. And then I also shared this idea. Hey, I would like to um, found like this wedding platform with this and that idea. Do you know anybody who would also like to do it or who could be a good fit? And then actually I was connected to David. And when we met, we just went um, for burgers and met for lunch here in Berlin. And we were sitting down together and um, we're talking about this wedding idea. And we just figured out, okay, we were both not like so passionate about it. Um, and then he said he has another idea, but he thinks that this is actually only something to do aside, like as a side business, but not really a big business. And this was actually Art Night, um, who he called back then in German Nach der Malerei. And he night said, yeah, doing like, kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. night of the paintings. And so the idea was like doing painting classes in bars and restaurants. And then I told him like, this is a great idea. We can bring like people together offline. This can be so big. And actually we did not really think a lot about founding the company together. We sat down then the other day, talked about our values, where we would like to go in life. And um, so far as we knew it back then. And then we just started and we did not really think a lot about it. And I think this was also really an advantage, not overthinking a lot. But it was just like those few seconds 
where we sat down together, where we said, okay, this is a great idea. We think it could work. We calculated it through. We talked about our values, as I said, and then we just kicked it off. So this was just, it sounds like in the first meeting, maybe two meetings already then meeting again, and then kind of saying, okay, that's it. Let's go for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And from that day on, um, and then I think only a few weeks later, and um, we founded a company and I was quitting my job, but I had to stay a couple of more weeks. And then we just started working together. And of course, it was quite tough in the beginning because we didn't know each other and we didn't know if the business model could work. We both had no idea about art. And the first um, brand we launched was about art and painting classes. So we had to figure out a lot and we had no money. So both of us had a couple of thousand euros at our bank accounts where we had to live from and also finance the company because we bootstrapped um, nearly a year before we got our first finance round. And this was quite tough, but it helped us a lot to kick off the business in, a, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I imagine as well, quite a scary step then to, you, you're coming from a corporate job where you get a monthly salary, nice pay to really say, no, that's it. You maybe have met like two, three times to now say, no, now I quit. And both of you know, falling back basically to your savings, having to live off savings. What was kind of like the triggering event that you said, or the, the thought maybe, if you remember that, that where you said, no, I have to do it. It's, it's now or never. It's like, now we start. Yeah. I think the best thing that I've learned from my parents is that you shouldn't be afraid starting from zero over and over again, if you think that could be something and if you would like to do it, because um, everybody is of, of us has potentially heard of the quote that you regret more the things in life that you didn't do than the things that you did do. So this is something that they teach me. And what um, I was thinking of is, okay, what is the worst case that could happen? So the worst case was in my case um, that I run out of money, that the business idea does not work, and then so what? Then I have to apply again for a job in a corporate. All right, good. Then I have to potentially start at a lower level in a corporate. Okay, also good. I can do that. And so the risk was not too high. And this really motivated me just to test it out. Mm -hmm. What was your biggest kind of concern? What, or why Art Night then would not work or maybe would not work? Maybe something that you wanted to test early or so? <laughs> Yeah, so there were so many concerns in the beginning, and um, I've heard that quite often, but actually for us, it was also true, because in the beginning, a lot of people just said, like, this idea will never, ever work. Like, people don't like to paint, nobody will go there, and um, this is not a good business case, this is not scalable, so we've heard anything of that. And something in our hearts and in our gut feeling told us, no this is going to work and this is something great. And we were just so passionate about it and believed in it that we just went through the really tough times. And, um, and it was hard. Like, as you said, I was coming from a corporate job um, with a good salary. I had a team there because I was a leader already. And then finding myself in an underground station in Berlin, trying to make marketing with flyers to random people and everybody just like walked, <laughs> walked away and I couldn't talk to anybody. And, and this wasn't easy, but it teach me like so much or also taking really the responsibility if something does not work, because if you are in a corporate job, it's sometimes easy. You always find somebody who, whose fault it is. So whether it's, it's your boss, your colleague, the board, politics in the corporate or whatever. And when you found your own company and things do not work, you wake up in the morning and you know, okay, damn it, it's my fault. And this is quite tough, but um, this is also something, a good lesson in life, I would say. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I could see you then saying, okay, no, let's jump in. Let's do it. We quit our jobs. Take us through the first steps, kind of like the first things to, to get our night going. Yeah, and um, we did not overcomplicate things. So the first step was, as I told you, we had this German name that nobody understood. So we were brainstorming about a name. And then once we said, okay, it could be Artnet, then we just took it. We did not think a lot about the name. Then about, okay, we need a logo, for example. So what did we do? We created it in Paint and PowerPoint and found like a freelancer to create like a JPEG out of it. 
um, and these were not our skills. Then we thought, okay, we need a website. So there are so many tools, even today, there are more tools than four years ago. And we created our, work, uh, our own platform on WordPress where we were able to sell events with like an event pride integration in the beginning. And then we were looking for artists, for example, because we both, as I said, were not the perfect artists to lead this workshop because we were not really good at painting. So we looked for artists on eBay Kleinanzeigen, so a platform where you can find like people to do side jobs with um, specific skills. The classified so, ads, no, eBay yeah. classified ads, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just started and we just tested it out. And in the beginning, um, we also thought because there is an uh, US model that is also doing like painting classes in bars and restaurants, but also in stationary shops. And what they did was they uh, combined it a lot with drinking. So um, it was more like drink and paint. And this was our first concept. So we thought, okay, that's great. People are having some drinks during the week, painting a little bit tipsy. And this is something what we tested in the beginning. And then we just figured out, okay, in the German culture, people don't want to get completely wasted during the week um, and also not during the weekend. And if they're doing like a new activity, so learn something new, and um, it's also really important for them to have a certain quality. And um, so then we just developed like step-by-step step our event format at Art Night and that it became like better and better. And the product was always the first thing that really should work. And what I also have to say, we really focused only on art night in the beginning, only on painting workshops with like a, a 30 times 40 canvas with acrylic paint, same brushes. And this is still the concept today. So we really did only one thing. And this is something that I really can recommend everybody focus on one simple thing that you can do really, really good. And there are tons of things you can do by yourself for things you can't do, like get some freelancers and to save costs and then just start it off and kick it off and try to sell it. And also in the beginning, we also put online, we call it like fake events. So we put online events with like motifs, fake artists that we didn't have, fake locations that we didn't have at that time, and then just try to sell it. And once we saw what is selling, we then found an artist, we then found a location. And this is something what you can always try also in e-commerce, like sell your product first, see if it's selling and then get your shit together. <laughs> Sell it before you make it here in that case as well, no? uh, finding out what exactly were the artists that they were. How did you actually pick the artists then to start out with? Was it a very like systematic process or more like, oh, hey, here we get in touch with some and seems like that could be a fit, let's start? Um, no, so we had, as I said, for us, the product is key. For Art Night, Shake Night, Bake Night and Plant Night, um, we knew that the workshop hosts that we are hiring, that they, they are the face to our customer because we are doing all the background work. But in the end, this person who stands in front and does the workshop, this person needs to be like entertaining. They need to have like a special skill and a talent that they can teach the others. And they really should love what they do. And people should also love this person kind of and um, what they are doing. And maybe if you think about if you have been to like a concert or theater or um, even though if you were in school, it is so dependent how your teacher is and if this person is doing it good or not good, if you then like it or don't like it. So this was so important for us from the first step on that we really had like this um, classical application process and they um, were going through different phases until we said, okay, yes, you can be an art night workshop host. And this is the way how it still works today. So we really get a lot of applications um, for people who would like to become a workshop host. And we are super, super picky. Mm -hmm. Been interviewing many as well to start. Do you remember how many you had done in the first uh, session? Is that the classic one where you as well invite friends and so, and then you, you, know, you have a session oh. of 20 people, half of them are your friends? And... Yes, like I really remember this because um, our problem was nobody knew what painting classes in bars and restaurants are. So we are actually the first ones doing that in Europe and nobody got the concept. So, you know, for example, painting classes in school, but 
nobody could think of like painting in bars and restaurants with your friends and this should be fun. So we needed some um, media materials. So we needed pictures, we needed kind of a video to promote what we are doing because it was so hard to explain it just in words. So what did we do? We organized one of our first like bigger art nights and we wanted to have like 20 people to really get the idea running and to um, also um, that you can see this in a video and nobody signed up. So we tried to, to sell tickets in all ways you can imagine, it did not work. Then we asked friends and our friends didn't want to join. They said like, oh, I don't know. I don't really want to paint. And I also think the concept will not work. We had some close friends, they joined from the first um, art night on, but not as much. And then we thought, okay, what, what can we do? And then actually we convinced Jägermeister to sponsor us a couple of bottles of Jägermeister. <laughs> and then we said to our friends, hey, we're doing this painting class and you get a lot of free drinks. It's now the other way around it. And what I told you before, you get some free drinks. So it would be awesome if you could join. And then people joined for free because we couldn't sell tickets. So um, this was the kickoff. And then just we grew like step by step. And I also remember um, David has like three sisters and they were so nice because always when there were two, not too many participants for the art nights in the beginning, they always joined. And some friends, like I think they were part of so many art nights because it's a lot of more fun if you're a little bit more people. And it's not the concept that when pe two people signed up, for example, that we are then doing the event. Mm -hmm. Wonderful thing as well I, uh, as a concept is the A-B testing, where you try out different elements that work as well. It seems here we have a, a fantastic example of A-B testing, how many drinks should be served to have the optimal kind of <laughs> experience. Uh, is that so? And uh, maybe as well, what type of drinks? Are you still with Jägermeister? Or, and how many drinks no. do you need to have a perfect art? <laughs> and as I said, like we just figured out that drinking is not the main part. So for us, we call it nowadays, we call it edutainment. So for us, it's really important that you learn something new, but that you also have a lot of fun and that you are entertained and that you socialize with other people and this all in a nice atmosphere. And this is something that is the basement of all our workshops. And um, yeah, and we tested a lot. And also you can imagine, for example, as in a movie, and um, movies have kind of a script. So in the beginning, you get to know the story and then it gets like really, really interesting. That's like the all time high, then okay. something bad happens again. <laughs> so you have this kind of storyline. And for hosting really good events, we also develop like our own storyline because now um, like half a million people have already joined one of our events so we've learned a lot and we collected feedback from every single person after every single event so um, this was a good start learning and this is also something like as a tip that I can give to everybody ask for honest feedback and take it seriously and ask for feedback from customers not from friends they're maybe sometimes too nice also your family is sometimes too nice so try to get really honest feedback from day one on from your customers and take it seriously. And, um, and this is what we really did from the beginning on. And, and then this was a chance for us to develop step by step our event products. And today, if um, you know what a net promoter score is, so this is like an international method to, um, to measure feedback. And all our event products have like an NPS over 90, which is crazy. It's amazing. Uh, it's really, really good. But this mm -hmm. is the key also of our success. Mm -hmm. And uh, when coming to to get uh, to getting that feedback, what would you say is the best format? That is, it, so it sounds a bit like questionnaires, sending everybody a questionnaire afterwards. Is is that the one, or is it as well personal interaction? Which channels do you find work the best? Yeah, so we are sending out feedback um, via email directly um, to our customers after an event, and then just asking two simple questions. So the one question is like the classical NPS question, which is that like would you recommend this experience to a friend, colleague, family? Um, and then you have a scale from one to 10. And then we also ask like a qualitative question. So where you can leave a comment. So what did you really like or dislike? Um, and then people really um, take time and we're super thankful for that, that they're taking time to really write us um, their feedback. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. In terms of you've, 
grown amazingly to many, many cities. And so what would you say when you then you find a model that works, what's the core maybe as well in terms of tips for, for com uh, founders that want to create something that scales and becomes really big and impactful? What would you say are your personal lessons learned when taking Art Night from the first city? I think you started in Berlin mm -hmm. then to taking uh, first, well, nationally in Germany and not, now you're much beyond you know, in Europe, expanded in Europe. What are like the core things to, to know for founders that want to make, uh, to create a high growth impactful venture? I think in the beginning, um, and this also for us dependent really on the product, we designed everything for scaling. Um, so for us, it was important that, and we, we expanded quite quickly to two other cities. So we started in Berlin in the first month, and in the second month, we were already in Leipzig and in Munich, because these were quite different areas in Germany, and we wanted to test out what kind of price point works, um, how does marketing work in those different cities, do we find artists everywhere? So this was our test case in three cities in Germany, because Berlin is, um, is also really special and Berlin is also kind of a little bubble and not Germany. So um, this is something that I would recommend. So test your products, not only in one main city, but test it like that you get Germany a little bit better represented. And then um, we always thought about our operations, how can we scale it? So how should the concept work that neither if, we, if we're there or if we're not there, that the workshop host is able to do the workshop by themselves, but that the workshop host kind of follows our rules of the experience. And this is something that we mastered and tested out a lot um, in the beginning with like Google Sheets of handbooks, etc. cetera. And um, this has grown today in a, like a, a nice host academy where people learn how to do things um, for our events and with us and to learn also a lot about how they can um, become, for example, at Artnet more successful with their art and sell art. Um, and this is something that, that we just tried. Looking back and this coming back to your first question. So for two years, we only did Artnet in Germany. So we scaled up this one product, as I said, acrylic paint, one size of canvas. We scaled this up in Germany only. Then we got a little bit too self-confident, I would say, looking back. So then we thought we are already at the point where we can um, scale to other countries. And um, so in 2019, we were really motivated and we uh, were ex um, expanding to the UK, to the Netherlands, to Austria, to Switzerland. And in the same year, in the, in the end of the year, we launched three new brands like Bake Night, Shake Night and Plant Night. And looking back, it would be much more helpful if we would have focused a few more months only on art night if we would have stayed in germany for a few months like really mastering our focus product before expanding too much and um, but in the other hand um also the other brands are quite successful and it worked out but looking back i would say this more focus for a longer time with one product would have been even better mm -hmm. then a dramatic uh, turn of events as you scale now you're in this growth mode testing new products with baked night plant night and so now COVID happens and from one day to the next almost you're forbidden to to gather groups together and I imagine you know, being on this growth trajectory with all engines on on full speed forward um, that's quite shocking and you wonder how do you um, continue yeah how did so that it was it was feeling like running with full speed against a wall <laughs> and um it, it was a little bit of shocking but there are two types like if if something like that happens for our team it was that we did not freeze so sometimes if something like that happens some companies they freeze and then they don't know what to do and and everything just stops and for us it was quite the opposite we were so over energized about this challenge. We had no clue what to do. We were bringing together like last year in February and March, like 40,000 people a month only with Art Night. And then suddenly we were not allowed to bring people together offline again. And we were also really against anything doing online. We never thought about this because we were on this like, yeah, against the trend mode where everybody and every company tries to get you more to screen like more screen time 
all the apps that were launched, Netflix and co. So everybody is in front of the screen. And we said, no, we're, we're trying to get people off the screen, experiencing something in real life. And then it was not possible from one day to the other. So we had to cancel everything, which was quite hard. And um, our workshop hosts were also struggling a lot because um, it is a side job for them. But anyways, they're earning money with it. And they were also not able to earn money with it. And we hadn't had no digital product. So what did we do? We were so energized that we have tested out then, I think it were 20 new things back then. So we had four brands, different countries. We then suddenly launched a podcast. We did like material kits. We did online classes, live online events, um, et cetera, et cetera. And we were in this hardcore testing mode in the beginning of a startup again. So three years old, growing big to more than 70 employees. And then you are completely back to zero and saying, okay, we have no product to sell. Everybody's now going online. So what do we do? And then we tested, as I said, like a lot of products. And then after a few weeks, we said, okay, we need to focus again. So what is really working? What do our customers really like? And then we heard about our customers again and asked them. And then we just figured out, okay, for bake night and for art night, we are doing live online classes and video tutorials and also material sets. For plant night, we also did back then some video classes. Um, and for shake night, we also did live online events, but um, it was a little bit against our mission because we wanted to bring people together. And with shake night, it's all about great drinks and bartenders. And then people were drinking in front of the camera. And once the Zoom call was out, they were sitting alone and drunk at home. And this is something where we said, okay, we don't want to continue that even though it was booked like really, really well. And um, so in the past couple of months, we've then worked on ShakeNet and we'll relaunch it soon again. But um, yeah, then we just stick to that. And there we are today. So in summer when it was possible, we had some safety um, events with like less people, safety um, conditions. And we will also, once it is possible again, we will also host in some safety events again. Um, but we also have a great online offer now to bring people together digitally until it's possible again to bring people together offline. Mm -hmm. And in terms of next steps, what's right now you're then in a way uh, growing digitally and the idea would be then to continue digitally and in person or would it be to switch back then to only person in person events? We've learned a lot in the last year. So the advantage of our digital products is that more people can participate um, because they are, and I'm also from a really small village in, in the south of Germany. And for me, the next bigger city is like one hour drive away. And there are also like old people who are not so um, flexible with like driving to a city, there are families um, with kids, for example, that are not so flexible. And we just got so much great feedback at, about our live online events. And especially for bake night, where you can bake in your own kitchen, learning from a pro, and you are not alone because you're baking with like 15, 20, 25 other people in Germany and connecting with them. And this is something so nice that we don't want to get rid of it again. But um, in our core mission still, we really believe in our today's digital world that it's for us really, really important to bring people together offline. And I think COVID just teached us a lot, but teach us also how important real social interaction is and how many people are feeling lonely right now, sitting at home, just looking at their screens and you feel somehow connected, but it's not real. And this is something where we are really happy that we can once we are able to it to do it again like can offer this opportunity to people and edutain the world again mm -hmm. wonderful any lessons learned in managing now the team fully online i mean you, you started even before that because you were expanding and then operating mm -hmm. in so many cities at the same time really amazing growth uh, there now moving completely to online having very limited i imagine chances to actually meet in person to to onboard people, to coordinate any core lessons learned for people that are now starting in this COVID lockdown time and have work with quite remote operations. Yeah. What does help you guys a lot? Yeah, communication is key. 
So um, when we were, and like our team is sitting in Berlin only and managing all the countries, cities, brands from Berlin. And um, we communicated always a lot, but when we were working digitally together, for example, we implemented daily standups with every team just to get connected in the morning, say good morning, what is your top pry of today? Um, wishing each other a good day. Like everything that happens actually in the kitchen or if you just pass by a desk, is not there yet. So you really need to make sure that you are over communicating all the time, that you inform much, much more and that you don't forget anybody and that you try to keep the social connection um, together. And this is something what we are trying and I hope we are managing quite well. But what I'm also seeing and in our team, we also have a lot of young people who are living alone or just moved to the city and um, it's quite hard. So. That's why we also offer and we have like a really big office. And um, so we also have a plan that if you would like to come to the office and work from the office, you, you can um, under some safety um, aspects and um, regulations, but to give people also the opportunity to choose um, and also support, for example, all our team members that are having family or kids there are going to school because they also have the challenge of homeschooling now. So being flexible in working hours. Um, and this is the second thing. So first thing, communication. Second thing, flexibility. Um, and I think the third thing is really understanding everybody's um, situations and be there for each other. Mm -hmm. Are there any tools and so that you find extremely useful in terms of software tools or something? Yeah. I'm a tool freak, like I'm an efficiency freak and productivity freak, I can say. So um, there are a couple of things that we are doing. So we are, for example, um, we are also using, of course, Zoom, but we also try to really prepare our meetings. So all our meetings are having an agenda and also a goal and to make it easier to moderate it and to keep it on time. And we have also um, like also, for example, an all hands meeting with the whole company once per week and then sending out a newsletter and tools that we are using to make life a little bit easier. So our whole company works also on Google and um, so everything digitally. So it was quite easy for us also switching from the office, everybody with laptops and um, to home office. And um, we are using also Slack a lot as like a chat tool um, where you can have like fast communication. And we're using also Asana a lot. And this is actually something that we implemented quite um, um, yeah, in detail after the lockdown and where we managed to do is where we can assign like to do's to each other and um, to manage tasks a little bit better with a better description. And this helped us a lot. Um, and then of course, <laughs> something that, um, that is an advantage for us as we are an experienced company and bringing people together digitally we of course also use our own tool of experiences and um, to have like nice Friday beers meeting um, with some experiences. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I mean, going forward in the, let's say the next year. So what are the things that you're most excited about? Yeah, I'm looking so forward and I'm repeating myself that um, when we are able to bring people together again in real life, I think nobody of us can imagine right now how it will be if at some point in the future we are able to sit next to each other uh, without a mask maybe <laughs> or to party with each other so this is something I think everybody of us is feeling and um, for me I had like a weird moment yesterday so I was also watching a movie and there was then a scene and I was thinking like why the hell aren't they wearing a mask what are they doing and it became just so normal that our normal life before COVID seems a bit unnormal today and um, so I'm looking forward to that and when it comes to the company um, I'm also looking really forward to giving all our workshop hosts again the opportunity to really share their talent share their experience and create moments for other people that they won't easily forget and um, and this is something what we want to come back to when it comes to expansion and um, for us now the first step is again to Get on track again with art night, shake night, bake night, and plant night, offline and online, and to also restart the countries. For example, Netherlands and UK, because of the situation, are paused right now. And then in the future, we have like a lot of expansion plans. So we have a lot of ideas in our uh, cupboard, I would say. <laughs> and because 
there is no limit of what you can learn and have fun with and do something new. So yeah, you can look forward to what is coming in the future. <laughs> Super excited no, to see that evolution. Final, final question then for today. What are you actually enjoying the most as being a found and creating art night and growing it and all the different experience nights? Um, there are a lot of tough things about it. So um, also in a talk yesterday, I just mentioned that I have the feeling that founding a company sounds so trendy right now. And I like it that, it's, uh, that it is trendy and that a lot of young people are also motivated to found a company, but it is also tough. So you work a lot. You go have like a roller coaster of emotions every day. Some things work, some things do not work. But what I actually really enjoy most about what I'm doing is that um, I'm learning so many things every day. So every day I wake up and the only thing I really can be sure about it, because usually it's also a little bit of a surprise what will happen today. Um, but the thing that I really can be sure about is that I will learn something new and that I will grow. And this is something that is mainly important for me and um, that I grow every day, learn every day, and also use my experience to make things better and make the world also a little bit better with what we are doing at Real Payment. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Amy, thanks so much for joining us today and all the best going forward and making it real. Very, very inspiring. Thanks. Thank you very much.